hey how's it going in this tutorial we're gonna look at time signatures now questions about time signature mapping pop up quite a lot in all of the forums and different groups about reaper that i happen to lurk in and a majority of these questions are along the lines of what's the fastest way to work with songs with lots of different time signatures how can i loop a rhythmically complex passage without having to do that manually and so on so i wanted to take my time with this video and hopefully by the end all the questions you're seeing on screen will be answered and hopefully a lot more as well now the native reaper way to work with time signatures is eh, you know it's fine it's pretty similar to any other DAWs that I've worked with you usually get a thing on your transport bar or maybe there's an option somewhere in the menus that lets you change the time signature and tempo of your song overall however I'd say any complex ish time signature map in any DAW is quite cumbersome to create and that is probably because 4-4 is such a prevalent dare I say common time signature in Western music even when music is written in an odd time signature it's very rare that it's in a few different time signatures in one song that is when you look at a really broad spectrum of music so does usually make handling the time signature just hidden enough to never be an issue for people who mostly write in 4-4 anyway and just convenient enough to access that you can easily change it once or twice per project and you'll be happy you may however belong to a subsection of music makers and music lovers that enjoy really complex rhythms that change and modulate every single measure weaving in and out of odd and common time signatures at your whim and doing all sorts of wacky stuff and you're probably finding it quite an unenjoyable experience to create your time signature map in your DAW as it would require constantly accessing submenus. So if that's you Reaper has a few tricks up its sleeve that you may be interested in learning. So in this video we'll start from level 1 just covering the basics and as always feel free to skip this chapter if you feel like you have a good grasp on the basics and the defaults and the basics should cover the needs of most music styles in which case you can just get out of here after that but after we cover the basics we're gonna go all the way up to what I will lovingly refer to as Tigran Hamasian difficulty mode. So enough yapping and let's get to level 1. Okay, so when you start a new project, your project would have a tempo and time signature assigned to it by default. You can find this out by going to File and Project Settings. And in the very first tab, you can see your project BPM and you can see your time signature and you can change it from here for your entire project. Another way is to go to your transport bar. And on the right of my transport bar, I have these two boxes. The first one shows my BPM and the second one shows my time signature. So I can also just change the tempo and time signature for my entire project from here. So I can go to 85 and I can change my time signature from here as well. But there is one way to give us a little more control and to do that I'm gonna go to the beginning of my project and I'm gonna hit shift and C which will bring this menu and from here you'll see the position of your edit cursor and you can set your tempo which we already did and I want to set my time signature for 6-8 we can also manipulate the pattern with which the metronome beats out our time signature. And we do that by typing one of four characters. So A stands for primary beat, which sounds like this. B stands for secondary beats, which sounds like this. So every metronome has two different sounds. A gives us the primary sound and B gives us the secondary sound. You can also replace any of these letters with T. That makes the metronome tap that beat in triplets instead of just doing it in beats. And you can also replace any of these letters with a dot and that'll make the metronome skip that beat. Kind of like my heart skips a beat when I see Kenny Joy has commented on my post. So in 6-8, I don't like my metronome to go tick. So I'm just going to change this to A-B-B-A-B-B. So now it goes... And now if we go to the beginning of our project, I have this little thing right here and it says my tempo and it says my time signature. This is a tempo slash time signature marker. For the duration of this episode, if I say marker, I probably mean time signature marker and not a regular, you know, text based marker like this. So if I want to change that, I can just double click on this at any time and I can change this time signature to something else. But otherwise, if my song is just in the same time signature, I'm done. But let's say I measure nine, the time signature of my song changes. So I can just place my edit cursor here and I can change the time signature from right here. So let's switch it to four, four and I hit enter and that'll place a marker here. Or alternatively, you can just hit shift C again. And now my song starts in six, eight and then goes four, four. So those are the real basics. And I've done a video in the past about tempo mapping, something that you recorded without a click but also in the interest of time I'm going to focus on time signatures in the rest of this episode and we're going to discuss tempo later on on its own and once I do that video the link of that will probably go up here. 
So while some people compose on the fly, and that is entirely possible as you'll see in a second, I personally think having a basic outline of your rhythm structure in your song before you start recording anything will save you a lot of headache and MacGyvering stuff down the line. So when it's possible, I'd like to do as much as I can with the time signature map before I ever start recording anything. So this is where if you have any sheet music that will come in handy and in the last episode we saw how to open PDFs. But for this episode, I've just made some notes on my notes tab, which you can access from extensions and notes and then you can go to the project notes tab and you can write whatever you want so as you can see my project has three sections section b has a pattern of 9 8 then 8 8 then 7 8 and then section c a and c b are both in 10 8 but they have a different length of like a tag in the end so what i can do is i can begin to create kind of the building blocks of my song by just doing one iteration of each section and then when it comes to arranging i can just take those blocks and i can move them around if I want to have section A repeat twice or section B loop over six or seven times. I don't have to do all of that manually. So my basic A section is in six, eight and it's eight bars long. And I know that I'm going to repeat this three times. So I'm just gonna go to measure 25 and I'm gonna write my B section right here. So I'll just do this first one the hard way. I'm gonna set it to nine, eight and I'm going to change the pattern. So I'm just going to do the rest by hand real quick and for this first iteration I'll make sure to get the metronome pattern how I like it as well. This is one iteration of my B section which I'm going to repeat over and over again. So obviously what I don't want to do is just to move on to the next measure and set this back to 9-8. So that just takes way too much time because then I got to rinse and repeat this and if I'm repeating this three times I got to do this nine times. Um, so instead what I can do is I can select these three measures and I hit shift and T to create a new region and I'll just call this B loop and give it a color. And now I can hover my mouse over it and I can hold command as I start dragging towards the right and you'll see that little arrow right there that means that when I release my mouse that region will be duplicated to start at that position so now I got a second iteration of the same thing so I'll just copy that over three times and I have my B section and it repeats three times the first time it comes around so now for my section CA that starts right here I gotta go forward 24 bars and I don't like counting because you'll definitely one day make a mistake so instead I'm gonna hit J to open the jump window and I'm just gonna say plus 24 here and when I hit enter we will go to measure 58 which is 24 bars in front of that place my next time signature marker here and then on measure 59 is where I will get back to my B section and again I can hold command and I can just drag this region over right to the top of measure 59 now I can again duplicate it let's say this time we need it four times now I'm not a ginormous fan of the region method for multiple reasons the first reason is I may want to actually do something else with my regions so maybe instead of having my regions go B loop B loop B loop I may just want to have one region that stretches over my entire B section like this for all its nine measures and also with regions it's a little bit more time consuming to like edit these maybe rename them maybe recolor them all of this stuff I gotta do by sub menu diving and the whole point of this tutorial is not to do that so here's what I like to do instead most of the time I have the same structure here 9 8 8 8 7 8 3 bars I'm going to set a time selection to it and I'm going to create a new track on top of my project and with my track selected and the time selection, I'll go up to insert and I go new MIDI item. And that'll place a MIDI item right here. Or my favorite way to do that is just to draw out an empty item. And you can do that by going to your mouse modifiers to track left drag. And you can set a mouse modifier for draw an empty MIDI item. So the cool thing with this is I can very easily color this. I can also rename it. And now if I get into ripple editing all mode, I can just select this item and I can just duplicate it by pressing command and D. And that'll do the same thing that our regions did. But then I get to measure 34, go back to 10, 8 here. I'll jump forward 24 measures, go to 11, 8 here. And now on measure 59, I need to go back to this structure that I just created. Now, unfortunately, what I can't do is just hit copy here, come to measure 59 and hit paste. That will carry over the tempo changes, but not the time signal changes was very annoying but what I can do instead is I hold command and I just drag this over and for a second it looks like we're ruining our entire tempo map but we're not once I leave this here you can see that the rest of our thing is just preserved so I have 10 8 right here and then I measure 58 
my 85 BPM tag is still right there as well. So it just kind of went over things, but once it passed them, those things were put back where they were, like a ripple. So now my B loop is right here and I can duplicate it. Maybe this time we need to duplicate it, let's say six times. And so now I have this track and this track is called guides and I can name and color these however I want them. And then I have my little blocks of different time signatures, which using the ripple editing all mode, I can just move around my project. The problem with this approach is that this only works if your project is otherwise empty. Otherwise with ripple editing all, you're just moving stuff all over the place. But the upside to this is that now I can actually denote my entire arrangement sections instead of just one iteration of a loop, a region. So I can just call this section A and I'll just call this my section B. So my regions kind of show me the macro structure of my song and my micro little looping structures within each section have an item assigned to them. So all of this is great, but even five or six time signature changes is nothing compared to what some people get up to. You may have a completely through composed song and every measure or two the time signature changes. You have really complex kind of phrasings that are looping over and over again. And all the tags are a different length and each section overall is kind of in business of its own. So items or regions also don't really help us with that. So I'm gonna create one more project and let's this time do something way more complex. I want to have a measure of five eight, then a measure of seven eight, then back to five, then to 9, then back to 5, then to 6. And the way to do that is using a few MPL scripts called MPL add number to number time signature. Now the name of these actions is a little bit weird, but I think the reason behind naming it this way is that normally we would use, you know, 1 forward slash 4 to say 1 4 time signature, but in scripting languages that could also mean a fraction. So it could mean 0 0.25. So I think that's why he named them this way. But basically reading these is really easy. This is 4, 4, 5, 4, 5, 8, this is 6, 8, and so on. So what I've done is I've created this little toolbar here and I have all those actions on here and I have made these little icons for them. And if you want, you can download this toolbar and all my icons from the blog post of this episode. And as long as you have the MPL actions installed, this should just work fine. And with this toolbar, I can have a very easy time doing really complex time signature maps. So I'll just place my edit cursor anywhere and I'll just click here and I'll go to five. I'll go to the next measure, I'll go nine. Next measure, another five, then a seven, then one more five, then a nine, and I'm done. And I can again insert a MIDI item here, get into ripple editing all mode, and I can just loop this as many times as I want. I don't know, maybe by the end of that, we just go to four, four to please the fans. And very quickly, I have written a large number of time signatures that change really quickly over time. And if I'm composing on the fly, this is also easy to do. So if I'm just deciding on the spot to change to different time signatures as I move, I can do that very easily and very quickly. Now, MPL scripts have covered most of the really common time signatures, but if you want to make anything of your own, it's also really, really easy to do. And I have made some of the new ones myself, but let's do one together. And this requires literally zero scripting. So let's say I want to do a 198 time signature. All I gotta do is just highlight any of these scripts, it doesn't matter which one, and I'll go to edit action, which opens this window right here, and I'm just gonna hit command and A to select all the code, command and C to copy, and we'll close this. I'll go down here to new action, new Rhea script, and it'll open your resource path by default. And I'm just gonna put this in the same place as all the other MPL scripts, MPL scripts various, but you can put it wherever you want. And for the name, I'll just say the name of the time signature I want to say. I don't I don't remember what I said, but I think I said 198. So I'll just hit save and it'll open this thing for us. And I'll just paste all that code here. I'll save it. And that is literally it. You don't have to do anything else. You don't need to look inside this code at all even. Because the genius thing about these scripts is that they look at their own name and they know from that what time signature it needs to be. So if I just place my edit cursor anywhere and I run this action, it'll put a 198 there. I also made a 1716 and I didn't need to do any scripting at all. You just duplicate one of these scripts and rename them. So even if you're doing a lot of these in bulk, you can go to options, show Reaper resource path, and then from there you go to scripts, you go to MPL scripts. And what I can do is also just duplicate these right here and I can rename these to whatever I want. Let's do a 23 over four. And once I did a bunch of them, renaming them right there, I can just come here and I can go load Rio script, add it right here, boom. And now if I ever need to do a 23 over four time signature, well, here it is. <laughs> So let's maybe do something like A, B, B, A, T, T, A, B, B. Let's go A and let's skip one of these beats. And then let's just go A, B, B, A, T, T, A, B, B, A. And then let's skip another beat and let's go triplet or whatever. I don't know. 
And now this measure sounds like this. Super exciting stuff. And just one last tip, as you begin to work more quickly and more on the fly, it's also more likely that you get really comfortable with this and you start making mistakes or you just do a time signature map and then you may decide that you want to change something later on. And depending on how badly you screwed up, it could be easy or somewhat complicated to fix, but definitely don't freak out. It's always possible to fix any mistakes that you make. So to illustrate this, let's just set all of these to different colors. I'm gonna make sure that my guide track items are set to beat position length three rate and I hit OK and let's say I want to take this 5 8 measure and I want to make it 6 8 so I can just rename that and it just shifts everything forward and just this item will look like this so I can just extend it and let's say between this 6 8 and 7 8 I want to go and insert another 5 8 measure so I got a 5 8 measure right here and I can just copy that if I put my edit cursor there and I hit instead of command and V, if I hit shift V, that will insert time and paste that there. And if I want to do something I haven't done before, for example, maybe I want to come here and I want to bring one measure of this 23, four over. I can just make it somewhere later down the line in my timeline and I can just copy it and I'll come back here and let's say I want to paste it here and I can hit shift and V. But as you can see, it didn't actually paste the time signature information. But what I can do now, since I'm sure that the length of this item is a 23 over 4 is I can set a time selection to it and I can come to insert measure from time selection new time signature and I have given this its own hotkey which is command shift and T so I hit that and here I can specify what my time signature is and how many bars and it will just change the contents of this time selection to that. So I want to go 23 over 4 and it's just one bar and I hit OK. And now that's done and everything afterwards has been reverted to how it was before. And you can even do this in case say you and a bandmate count things differently. Which happens as well with kind of different types of polyrhythmic structures. You may want to intentionally count your song differently. So let's say right here when we have a 5, 8 and a 7 eight the bass player is counting one five eight and then counting one seven eight but the drummer for the sake of argument may be counting this just as two six eight so another thing i can do is just set a time selection to this and i'll just hit my hotkey this time i can just go this is a six eight and i can go this is two bars and i hit it and it would just change the same two things into six eight even better than that what you can do is create a new track and we'll call this basis click and I'll make another track drummer click with this selected and we're still in 5878 eight. I'll go up to insert I'll go click source and that'll put this here which is just our click track and what I can do is I can glue this to make this audio then I'll hit my hotkey and I'll change this to two measures of 6 8 and this time I'll go on the drummer click track and I go insert click source boom I can then glue this and now as you can see these are two different click sources that are beating the same pulse but the strong and weak beats are different based on the preferences of your different musicians so even if different people in your band are counting things differently you can just super all of that inside the same map. Now time signature is on its own kind of a controversial weird topic especially if your musical background like mine is from eastern music then working with western time signatures is just a little bit weird and I have a lot of kind of controversial thoughts and opinions about that and if you're interested in knowing those let me know in the comments and I'll make a tutorial. It will not be a reaper tutorial it will more be a tutorial about how I think about time signatures and rhythms overall so if there's some interest in that let me know in the comments and I'll make a tutorial for that. Otherwise Otherwise, that's it for today. These are just some tips. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll probably do a part two for this. I'll also do another episode for tempo and another episode for the metronome itself because I think the Reaper metronome leaves a lot to be desired. And otherwise, thanks for watching. If you like the work I do, you can donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. Thanks to all our previous donors. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Bye.